Hey guys, this is Bunny Muffins. Today we are going to do a guide on how to play Vel'Koz. So Vel'Koz, he's gonna be one of those four cost carries, probably one of the primary mage carries or ability power carries that we're gonna see this set. Uh, so if you are interested in those types of compositions, we're gonna do a full rundown, such as what the strengths and weaknesses of the comp is, how to play it, leveling patterns, sample team compositions, uh, things to sub in and sub out, and how to play the early, mid, and late game. So right off the bat, here is a sample composition that you could see at level 8. We have a Garen in the front line, we have a Rel as another tank, Nautilus for Ironclad, Lux to fill out the redeem slot, and then we have in the back line Zyra, Karma, Ivern, and Vel'Koz. Of course, there are many different ways of playing, but this is just one of them, and we have for itemizations on Vel'Koz, Sacrificial Jeweled Gauntlet, Hextech Gunblade, and Spear of Shojin. And then I also like to buff up Vel'Koz with Chalice of Powers. Uh, and then for the front line, Garen, just any tank items will do. Some that work really well are Warmogs, Gargoyle Stoneplate, and Titan Resolve. But we'll get into all the other itemization options later in this guide. But if you guys always want to find the most updated comps on TFT, go ahead and check out my website, bunnymuffins.lol. And also subscribe to the channel if you are not already. So if you guys already checked out my leveling guide for set 5 already, you'll notice that we are going to be doing what's called a standard leveling pattern. So typically you hit level 4 at either 2-1 or 2-2 if you're trying to go on a win streak. Otherwise, you just level up naturally. And then for level 5, generally it's going to happen at 2-5 if you can keep at least 10 gold. If not, just wait till 3-1 to level up if you are loose streaking. Level 6 is almost always hit on 3-2 and you typically have around 30 gold at that time. You can roll a little bit if you need to stabilize or to maintain a win streak at that point. Next up, level 7. This is done at either 3-5 if you can hold 30 or more gold. If not, wait till 4-1 and roll as needed. Level 8 is going to be hit on 4-2 or 4-5 if you are win streaking or if you can stay above 30 gold. Otherwise, wait until stage 5-1 and all in at that point because that's when you're going to want to hit all the two stars in your team. Then for level 9, the only time you go to level 9 is if you have all your 4 cost carries to 2 star, and you have to have a front line. So if you have nothing else left to roll for, like you have Vel'Koz 2, Karma 2, Ivern 2, uh, Rel 2, then maybe you could consider going up to level 9. Um, so now that we know the basics of how to play the composition, let's go into the strengths and weaknesses. So this comp has a large variety of transitions and boards that you can play, in your final composition. So the one we saw before is just one example. There are like so many different ones we're going to go over in the rest of this guide. And depending on the lobby you are facing and depending on what type of economy you have, you can mix and match your team to perfectly counter everyone else. Furthermore, this comp can utilize a variety of item components, even on Vel'Koz. So now onto the weaknesses. This comp does struggle a lot in terms of positioning. If you corner your Vel'Koz every game, you're going to have a bad time because you're going to get hit by Thresh every now and then. So you have to memorize all the matchups you're going to have and position accordingly. And that's one of the downsides of the composition. Of course, if you are not playing against people who are swapping their position every single turn, you don't need to worry too much about that. But next, this composition can also be a little weak against people with Mystic and Knights because your main damage comes from one source. Now onto the items. We're going to start off with the Carousel Priority. So what I like to do is go Rod, Tear, Sword, then Glove. And then after that, there's like a steep drop off. Uh, and then you'd go for Belt, Chain, Cloak, then Bow. And just a note on Shadow Items, because Shadow Items are the theme of the set for set 5. When taking Shadow Item components, do it with caution, because poorly used Shadow Items will be very detrimental to your team and bring a lot more harm than good. So just off that, like there isn't a shadow item that is completely necessary for this build, but some of them you can use are shadow rod, shadow glove, and shadow tier, and we'll get into exact items they can make later. So best in slot Vel'Koz items right now, I think are Spear of Shojin, Sacrificial Jeweled Gauntlet, and then Hextech Gunblade. But if you have regular Jeweled Gauntlet, that one works out fine as well. So these items are great on Vel'Koz because Spear of Shojin really helps him to cast much faster. Sacrificial Jeweled Gauntlet or regular Jeweled Gauntlet is the best damage item for casters. And then after that, Hextech Gunblade is going to give him a lot of healing. So he can turn really lopsided scenarios such as like 1v4s uh, into his favor, which is actually pretty nice. Because if you keep him in the corner, only two units are going to be able to attack him in melee range. Just make sure if you do go for the Sacrificial Jeweled Gauntlet, you pretty much need a Hextech Gunblade. If not, he's going to kill himself. So. Some substitutes that we can check out are Hand of Vengeance, which is the Shadowed Hand of Justice item, which is tier plus glove. This gives you both healing and damage, which is really, really nice. 
after that, Rabadon's Death Cap, both the Shadow and regular version are really, really good because this gives you a lot of AP. This is a great replacement for Jeweled Gauntlet. Next up, Blue Buff can replace Shoujin. It's not as good, but it still helps Velkos get its cast off faster. And then some like okay items, like items that like are playable, but like not really ideal are Gwinsu's Rage Blade, Archangel Staff, both versions, and Giant Slayer. So if you're facing a lot of high health teams, Giant Slayer is a very interesting one to use. After that, frontline items, these are very important on Garen, on Rel, all those guys. Both Guardian Angels are good, both Gargoyle Stone Plates are good, Redemption's really nice, ZZ Rot Portal's good, Titan's Resolve, and Warmogs are my favorites right now. Uh, after that, you make some support items. So after you complete all your Velkaz items, that's the only time you want to focus on making support items. Support items could be stuff like Zeke's Herald, Chalice of Malice, and Chalice of Power. Those three items are really good at buffing up your Velkaz. After that, Magic Resist reduction such as Static Stiletto or Static Shiv is really nice. And then Sacrificial Redemption is one of the like best tank items in the game in my opinion. Um, and you put it on a backline unit that can't kill themselves such as Lux because Lux does give shields. And after that, both Morello and Namakons are pretty useful if you put it on Garen or Volibear. And then lastly, both types of Thieves Gloves are pretty good to put on any random unit. Uh, you just have to make sure to pay attention to the items because sometimes you get stuff like lockets or more chalices and then you have to position accordingly. After that, some utility items that are nice, of course, is Zephyr and Shroud of Stillness. Both of these are going to be really good on any single team. So now you might be wondering, what if I get a lot of spatulas when playing this composition? Well, first off, you could go for a Redeem Spatula, Ironclad, or Cavalier Spat. All of these are really good, and the best item holders for Redeem Spatula are Taric and Garen. Ironclad could be put on anyone, and then Cavalier Spat is really good on Garen. Lastly, we have Spellweaver Spatula, which is Spatula plus the needlessly large rod, and then this one allows you to not run Zyra and just run any random 2-star legendary uh, to get Spellweaver later in the game. Alright, now let's get into the early game. So early game, this is going to be stages 1 and 2. I'm going to give you guys 6 variations you could play in the early game. The most important thing during the stage is reaching 10 gold as fast as possible, um, and also trying to keep either a win streak or a lose streak depending on what type of starts you get. So first one we want to go over is a Legionnaire variant. So this is with Aatrox in the front line. He could hold tank items if you have them already. And then Kalista is actually great for holding some Velkaz items. After that, you put in Leona and Syndra to finish out the redeemed units. Obviously, any redeemed can do, but those are ones that work pretty well. Once you hit level 5, you could add in any knight unit to round out the composition for stage 2. Next up, we have the Ranger variant. Again, we have Leona in the front line, this time paired with Thresh. And then in the back, we have Varus, Vayne, and Aatrox. This gives you 3 redeemed, 2 knights, and 2 ranger. Obviously, you can swap out any knight, redeemed, or ranger unit if you find a different one instead of the ones listed here. After that, we have a Renewer opener. So Renewers, they're a bit tricky because you could even go into like a Lissandra reroll, uh, depending on the game if you get a lot of Lissandra, so you don't always have to play Velkaz. But Lissandra is a beautiful item holder for Velkaz because she uses the same exact items. You round this one out with Renewers from Vladimir, and then I like to add Kled and Sejuani, but those two units, they could be pretty much any tanks that pair well with these types of synergies. You could do either like Morgana and LeBlanc as two extra units for Coven if you happen to find them, or you could just use like two knights, for example. Next up, we have an Abomination opener. So Abominations, they are an Abomination in the early game. They are super, super strong. And you just run Brand as your item holder and then run the Abominations and then just fill out Spellweaver and Brawler as the final two slots. Next up, we have a Hellion opener. So Hellions, they're just, if you get like a lot of Ziggs, Poppies, and Kleds in your stage one shops, uh, you could just run this comp and yeah, it's like a super cheap board and you could just turbo win streak with it. Uh, all the way through stage 2 if you get a good start for it, and then you could just build random items, even like non cost items such as Static Shiv, because it just win streaks you that much harder. To round out this composition, since there are only 3 units listed here, you could use any Cavalier or any Knight unit for those 2 slots. Last but not least, we have the Assassin opener. So this one's going to be with a Kha'Zix and LeBlanc opener, with preferably Warwick and Gragas as the frontline tanks. Obviously, if you get different tanks, you could use something else. But Gragas is good because he gives Dawnbringer for Kha'Zix, and then LeBlanc would hold all the Velkaz items. If you manage to hit a Katarina as well, you could use her instead, and you can even add in 3 Forgotten right afterwards at level 5. Now onto the mid game, this is going to be stages 3 and 4, so this is typically levels uh, 6, 7, and 8. So during stage 3, you want to be level 6, 30 gold at stage 3, 2. 
Just keep in mind, you might need to roll a little bit if you lost streak the entirety of stage two, or if you are sitting on a large amount of pairs. Large amount would probably be something like three or more. After that, you could level to level seven on either stage three, five, or four, one, depending if you need the win streak or if you have stuff to put in. Just do note if you do level up, you need to have at least 30 gold in order to do so. I'll get into more of that in a future video of why you need to do that and the math behind it, but for now, just like follow the rule. Never level up unless you can keep at least 30 gold during stage 3 and beyond. After that, level 8 can occur on either 4-2 or 4-5 uh, if you are doing really well that game. Just level up to level 8 at stage 5-1. If your board is strong, you don't really have to roll at 7, but a lot of times you are weak or low health, in which case you need to roll like maybe anywhere from like 10 to 30 gold at level 7. But there are some games where you don't have to touch your reroll button until level 8. So again, I'm going to give you six scenarios of what typical boards could look like during this mid game. So first up, we're going to look at a renewer board at level six. So this is Morgana, Vladimir as a front line, Lissandra, Lux and LeBlanc as a back line and Kha'Zix as an extra assassin. This gives you three Coven, two Mystic, two Assassin and two Nightbringer and two Renewer. After that, at level seven, after you roll down, this could turn into something like this with Morgana in the front line and Vladimir still, but you have Velkaz in the back line with the items now, Syndra, Ivern, Zyra, and Lux. Now onto a next composition, we have the Redeemed mid game. And again, this is what it could look like at level six. We have Leona, Hecarim, and Thresh in the front line, and then Syndra, Vayne, and Varus in the back line. This one has Varus as the item holder. On level seven, you could turn this board into something very similar with more expensive knights such as Tarek. While keeping the redeemed and putting Velkaz in as the item holder and finding a new Varus. And you could also put Lux in the corner if you're facing a lot of Threshes. Next up is the Abomination mid game. So this one at level 6 is just the Abomination board from before with Brand Carry. And then after that at level 7 you could add in Rise for 4 Abomination and just kind of keep this board for a long time. You could get all the way to level 8 with this board and then put in Velkaz later. So this board is kind of weird because it's very stable, but it's a really big transition to get into Velka. So, so you don't need to roll that much. However, once you hit level eight, you're going to have to be doing like a huge mechanically intensive roll down because you're going to have to replace your entire board. But you don't need to do that till much later in most cases because abominations are super strong in the early and mid game. Now we are going to get into the late game. I think this is the part where most people are excited about. So. I'm gonna give you guys like, I think three or four level eight boards and then one level nine board. So first off, we're gonna start with the six redeem board. This was the most popular version of Velkaz at the start of the set. It's still really good, but you just need to hit all the redeemed units, uh, but it really depends on how much they buff or nerf the six trait synergies. And that'll be the main deciding factor on when to play this or, or how often to play this. So this is similar to what we had in the beginning. We have Garen with all the tank items in the front. We have Velkaz in the back with the best in slot items. And then we have Syndra right next to Velkaz. She's going to hold some of the Chalice of Powers if you have them. I like putting Varus in front of Velkaz and then Lux in the opposite corner is pretty important along with Rel in the opposite corner. Rel's ability works in that she targets your furthest unit or furthest ally and she pretty much builds a shield between those two units and stuns other people in between them. So the advantage of a six redeem board is that it's pretty cheap to get because there are a lot of low cost units. So you could get this board really easily on level seven. And then at level eight, you just add in either Garen or Tarek for Knight, and then Kindred or any other Mystic to pair with Lux. If you have a Redeem Spatula, you could replace Varus with an Invoker or a Mystic, or you could swap Leona for Tarek and replace Varus and the Mystics for four Knights. In our next level eight board, we have Rel, Garen, and Volibear as our primary tanks. We also put Nautilus in the back line. This gives us Ironclad and Knights. And we're only running three redeemed this time, but we have the same Belkaz in the back. We have the Syndra up front. We have the Syndra buffing him. Uh, and then we have Ivern, which gives a huge GA buff for the Volibear. So Volibear, he pretty much gives an AoE CC. So he's just going to be really good in most metas, as long as he has enough mana to cast. Um, but yeah, you could also add in Heimerdinger at level nine for this board or play it over Zyra or Volibear. And you could also substitute Syndra and Zyra for Lux and Kindred as well. Or you could also do like Lux Karma over Volibear and Syndra. Many variations are possible with this board because you're only running the first version of like pretty much every synergy. So you can just mix and match in any way. And this is where your creativity is allowed to shine during the game. Our next level eight board is one of the ones we just talked about with the Karma in there. And again, now we use Ivern as the Chalice holder and you could also level up, put in Volibear or another Mystic. The one key thing to note is that this version of the composition offers less CC than the previous one, but offers more damage. So it's a mix and match depending on what you need. So if you're facing a lot of Velkazes, let's say there's a patch where Velkaz is super meta. So this variation is really good because we have four Knights and we have Garen as a primary tank up front again. 
Vel'Koz in the back, but we kind of isolate him and we kind of spread out all our units in order to avoid enemy Vel'Kozes. Alternatively, if you're facing a lot of attack damage teams, you could swap out this Kindred to put in Jax for three Ironclad, which really destroys a lot of those teams. Lastly, you could drop Zyra if you're rolling on level eight and replace with another two-star legendary unit at level nine. So now that we went over all the level eight scenarios, let's get into a level nine. So this is a very capped board. We have, in fact, we don't even have Vel'Koz in this board, which is kind of funny, but you could run Teemo two-star, Syndra still buffing everyone up. You could throw in a Heimerdinger, Volibear, and Garen in the front line with Rel charging up and Nautilus and Ivern protecting the back line. And then you also have a Karma in there for four Invoker. This is a really strong board. Teemo uses all the same items as Vel'Koz did. Uh, so this variation is very, very strong. Kind of funny how we're talking about Vel'Koz comps and the final version of the comp doesn't even include it. This is kind of rare, but if you do end up getting Teemo 2, this is one of the boards you could try to go for. So now we are going to go into some positioning considerations. Uh, you want to scout and mirror your board if needed to position Vel'Koz. So you need to be doing quick swaps from side to side pretty often if you're scouting a lot. So you always want Vel'Koz to be on the opposite side of their carry so you are able to hit them with your laser. And you also want to position your CC on the opposite side of Vel'Koz to make sure your opponents choose between either getting CC'd or eating the Vel'Koz laser. That's typically why we have Zyra and Vel'Koz in opposite corners because Zyra CCs one way and Vel'Koz shoots the other way. And then you also have Nautilus guarding your Vel'Koz and he walks up front and stuns people in front of him. So now you might be wondering like, if you're facing a lot of Vel'Koz's, what can I do to counter him? So first things first, Zyra and Volibear are great crowd controls to stop Vel'Koz ultimate. Right now there's not a lot of backline crowd control other than Thresh, uh, but Volibear is able to hit the backline and same with Zyra. Next up, we have Thresh that we just talked about, plus Diana, and these units can also CC Vel'Koz by hitting the backline, um, but you can still position around it so they aren't as reliable. Next up, Shroud of Stillness is really good against Vel'Koz because his max mana gets increased from this item, and that delays his initial cast. Lastly, you always want to be on the same side as Vel'Koz because if you ever get a nice swap on him, uh, his laser is going to hit one of your useless units, and that way like your carry has more time to deal damage. So before we get into our tips for this comp, uh, I wanted, I just wanted to mention like if you are getting contested a lot, you can pivot into Karma pretty easily, so you don't always have to go for Vel'Koz. The only difference in items between Vel'Koz and Karma is mainly the blue buff instead of the Spear of Shojin. You could also go for a legendary board that we talked about before by playing around Heimerdinger or Teemo since they both make great use of this jeweled gauntlet. Now just for some random tips. A uh, Syndra with one mana item is a great tech for dealing with Assassins or Volibears and Garens that are on the same side as your Vel'Koz because that means she gets her cast off really quickly and just throws people all the way to the back. Super, super useful if you really need to protect your Vel'Koz from pesky units. Next up, if you are fighting another Vel'Koz player, try to be on the same side as him and have Zyra across from his Vel'Koz. Uh, this way your Zyra can often interrupt his Vel'Koz and uh, also put your Volibear on the same side as his Vel'Koz for the same purpose. So. So if his Vel'Koz is here, you want to put yours here and then put your Zyra over there so that she shoots across and CCs his Vel'Koz. Next up, if you see a lot of Thresh players in your lobby, you could shift Vel'Koz one hex towards the center of wherever you cornered him and then put a new bait unit in the corner where Vel'Koz was to get hit instead. The last tip I have for you guys is that Vel'Koz will always ult towards the unit closest to the center of the map. So if you're in a 1v1 scenario and your opponent second rows their carry, you can position your Vel'Koz in the second row as well to hit his carry with the laser. So that is it on the guide to Vel'Koz. I made this guide with one of our coaches. If you check out the coaching links on my website, bunnymuffins.lol, and this was from RE Chaos. And if you guys are interested in learning from him, definitely check out the coaching section because he does do a lot of the sessions there. And if you guys did enjoy this, please be sure to subscribe and like the video if you learned something new. And if you already subscribe, you're wondering what you can do, maybe go, go ahead and share it with one of your friends who's struggling with playing Vel'Koz and really wants to play him. Um, but that's really all I have to, for today. I will see you guys later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.